and thanks the organizer for the invitation. Uh, so I, I will talk on the ongoing project uh, with uh, Pierre Charolois, Luis Garcia, and Akshay. <coughs> so there won't be a lot of, uh, there won't be uh, really new results, but uh, uh, I want to uh, convey some idea of this project. And uh, to start with, I want to uh, uh, discuss, uh, to, to mention uh, an old theorem, which is due to Sullivan. It's, it's as old as me, so it has gray hair. Uh, and uh, and uh, the theorem says that uh, the Euler class of uh, of an SNZ uh, vector bundle vanishes rationally. Uh, so one nice feature, so I will explain this, uh, what it means and what, why uh, it's, uh, I, th I think it's interesting. So, but one feature of the proof is that it's, uh, it's half a page long. So it's uh, something I, when I, I was happy because I, I thought I could understand this. Uh, uh, and uh, and yeah, I, it has uh, very nice consequences, uh, I think, uh, for arithmetic. Uh, uh, because when something vanishes rationally, it means that uh, it can be, uh, so it vanishes in homology, it can be uh, transgressed. So there is a primitive of a uh, multiple of it, and, it, and you can compute. Uh, uh, so it, in some sense, a, an Euler class is a homology class. Uh, and if it vanishes, then you can compute linking with this, uh, with a representation, a representative of this. And this gives numbers, the linking numbers. And so might be, it might be interesting from the point of view of arithmetic to get uh, numbers, uh, to get in integrality or rationality uh, statements. So that's what I, I want to, to explain. But first, let me, um, let me give uh, some uh, uh, a crash course on uh, all our uh, classes of, uh, of uh, vector bundle. <coughs> so uh, uh, what I want to say, so I, wi I, will, I will stick to uh, rapidly to SLNZ vector bundle, but let me first take start with a vector bundle and the zero section sigma naught. Uh, so it will be a real oriented vector bundle of uh, dimension n. Uh, and m is a closed uh, is a closed manifold. And uh, when you have this, you have uh, the so-called Tom isomorphism, <laughs> which identifies uh, the cohomology of the base using dual form. You multiply by uh, the uh, the dimension of the fiber. So you are here, and uh, and uh, of course, you are only looking at uh, uh, what it what it, uh, at the uh, uh, on the neighborhood of the zero section. So it's rel relative to what's uh, happening at uh, at infinity. So this is the uh, the term isomorphism, and in particular, if you take uh, uh, the the canonical class of uh, of M, then there is a dual form. It's map onto and to an element which is called the term class. <coughs> okay. And, uh, and so what is the Euler class? This is uh, what is important for us is really the term class for the, but uh, what is the Euler class of the vector bundle? It's just uh, you pull back by the zero, by the zero section the image of u in the degree n cohomology of e. So you take the dual form to the zero uh, to, uh, to, uh, to m and uh, to the zero section, and you pull back uh, by the zero section. So you measure this how itself intersects. <coughs> so and that's an element then in the cohomology 
in the degree n cohomology of m. And so now there is a, we have defined what is the Euler class. So let's go to uh, SLNZ vector bundle. Uh, so, and this will be a very nice observation of Sullivan. <coughs> and now I will suppose that the vector bundle, uh, that the structural group that the structural group of E can be reduced, which I, I will denote gamma, can be reduced to a subgroup of SLNZ, which means that uh, there exists a sub-bundle, which I in E, which I will recall, uh, recall EZ, which is a sum bundle and a lattice. <laughs> a sum bundle with uh, each fiber is a lattice. Is a lattice. And which is preserved. Uh, which, um, oh, sorry, sub bundle. Uh, uh, I, I, the bundle over M. Okay, so th this means we have that, and since we have that, we can take the quotient bundle, which is a bundle over R M, which is made of tori. Okay, so that's uh, now we are in this uh, in this uh, position. The fibers. Are tori. And to study to study this, uh, this uh, such a bundle, uh, Sullivan uh, will uh, will use uh, multiplication by uh, by some integer in the fiber. And so I will use the following notation. <coughs> I take m a positive integer and call a m the set of m torsion points. in A, and I will denote, now that we are in the torus uh, bundle, zero the, the zero section, the, the image of the zero section. OK, and now what is the observation of Sullivan that will be crucial uh, for the rest of the talk is that uh, <coughs> so is that uh, under with this uh, notation, if you look at the cohomology class corresponding to the, uh, the set of torsion points minus m to the n, the class of the zero section, then this is zero in the cohomology of the total space, uh, but in the rational uh, in the rational cohomology. <coughs> so why, why it will be important for us? Because then in that total space A, this class vanishes, or multiple of it vanishes, and we, we will be able to take linking number and linking numbers to link any, uh, a class wi with this, and then consider uh, uh, a class of cohomology of degree n minus 1. So since it's important and uh, and very elementary. Let's let's give a proof of uh, of this lemma. <coughs> and for that, uh, I will, uh, as I said, look at the multiplication by m in the fiber. So uh, multiplication by m induce, induces two maps: the direct image map in cohomology and uh, the natural map in cohomology, which is this. <coughs> so we have these two maps, and the, the multiplication by m in each fiber induces a covering, a covering map from a, a to itself. So because a, the multiplication by m is a covering and a degree m to m to the n cover, then we have if you if we first pull back by m and then apply the direct image map, then we end up to m to the n times the identity. So in particular, this map here 
is injective. Okay, and now uh, now we will uh, look at look at uh, at this by making the following observation: What is uh, the pullback of the zero section? The pullback of the zero section is a set of m torsion points, so it's a class of m torsion points. And what is the <coughs> the direct image of the zero section? Of course, you push the zero section onto the zero section, so it's it's, it's 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 itself. And so now, when we compute the direct image image of this class, since the torsion the m torsion points is the pullback of the zero section, we have m lower star times m upper star, which is m n times the identity. So it's m n times the class of the zero section minus m n times the class of the zero section. So it's zero. So this map m lower star uh, and this map m lower star is q. So this class has to be zero. Okay. So that's. That's uh, uh, in cohomology the uh, the observation of uh, of, Sulli of Sullivan. Okay. Uh, yeah. Since I still it's it's the beginning of the talk. So see, I see, since I still have some time, I will briefly explain the relation with the uh, with uh, with this ther this theorem, especially as it's less clear in the it's it's a bit fast in the paper of Sullivan. <coughs> And then go on with uh, with something more related to your uh, interest, uh, hopefully. Um, so <coughs> let us explain how this uh, this uh, observation of Sullivan uh, implies that uh, the rational Euler class, not of the of the bundle E, but uh, of the normal bundle. Bundle to uh, to zero in A vanishes. Okay, so I explain I explain this, and to to do this I consider the cohomology re relative to uh, to uh, to the complement of the zero section. Here we have the Tom class. And remember that we want to look at this, its image in the cohomology of A. So that's mapped onto, onto the dual class to the zero section. <coughs> and now what do, we, uh, what do we use? We use that m times zero is certainly equal to zero. So in, if you think of this multiplication by number as section, then this means that zero star composed with m star is equal to zero star. <coughs> okay? And, and so zero star of the class of the set of m torsion points is equal to zero star of m star of zero. So it's equal to this. So zero star of the set of m portion, torsion points is the same as the pullback of the zero section by the uh, uh, of the of the zero locus by the, the zero section. So in particular, if you consider one minus m to the n times uh, this pullback, then this is equal to zero star of of this class. And now this class we know vanishes rationally. So this vanishes rationally. So the term, <coughs> so the, the dual to the zero section in, in A vanishes. So the normal bundle has trivial, uh, uh, trivial Euler class. And the normal bundle to the zero section in A is isomorphic to the, uh, the, bond, the, the bundle E, so the theorem is, uh, 
is proved. Okay, so that's um, <coughs> that's so far from uh, uh, for topology. And so now, now what is important for us is that this uh, uh, this this class as a homology class, you can compute linking with this. And so let's uh, let's move on to to the Eisenstein class. I, I can use this one if I. Uh, Huh? It, it, won't, it won't move, but uh, I want to say some stuff that are not so important to remain on board, so, uh, so I will use it. Okay, so it's nice to use one that has doesn't be, hasn't been used by the others. Uh, uh, so, so, so now let's uh, con to uh, I want to describe more uh, in more uh, cohomological terms the linking the, li the linking class I was uh, mentioning. To do that, I will work in cohomology, so think cohomology and compute in uh, think homology and compute in cohomology. So I, I will consider the long exact sequence associated to this pair uh, of space. Okay, uh, so. <coughs> so this part of the long exact sequence we have already considered and uh, and we know by term isomorphism that this is isomorphic to the H0 of uh, AM uh, so, which is just the number of connected components of the of the uh, of the set of uh, uh, of torsion points, and inside this, we have considered that was the trick in Sullivan's proof. We have considered the kernel of uh, of the multiplication by uh, by m, the direct image multiplication by m, and inside this, in we have even considered a preferred uh, a preferred element, but we could have taken another one. Is um, the class of the class of this, okay? And this these elements are precisely the elements that map to zero on uh, on HN HN of A. We can think of this as uh, as divisors with degree zero divisors, okay? And an element here, because of this long exact sequence, lift there. The, that is the linking uh, the, the linking class, but the the problem is with the the because there is uh, not a canonical way to lift uh, to lift this class. So let me make a. So what Sullivan does is that this class lift. Lift to. To this and now. You can pursue the the same kind of ideas as uh, Sullivan used by using now multiplication by another integer, an integer let's say a, and that was done by uh, Faltings in a nice paper. And using multiplication by a, you can split the uh, the spectral sequence co 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 uh, computing this cohomology. This is known as Lieberman's trick, and this is this gives a way to Choose a prefer, a preferred uh, pre-image of this class. So this we will. Uh, it's not. It's not hard, but we will uh, uh, use it as a black box. Black box. There exists a canonical lift in uh, 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 that I will denote Z M because it still it still depends on the on the integer M, which belong to. To this, so there is a canonical way to compute linking number with the class uh, with the with the class here. A priori, you only have an element, a rational element modulo z, but uh, you thanks thanks to Faltings, uh, you have uh, in fact uh, uh, a rational uh, <coughs> a class, and you can even detect the defect of being uh, an integer class. Okay, uh, and <coughs> now once you have this. Conclusion. Now consider. Uh, oh no, maybe I. Sh maybe I first I have to make a remark that I will make here. 
remark. If you have uh, two, let's say, two torsion, uh, two, two element m, so m1, m2, like this, <coughs> and then we could have considered the class associated to the product of m1 and m2, OK? But uh, the product, uh, uh, so the, you are considering the m1, m2 torsion points minus m1, m2 to the n, 0. And this splits as uh, m1, m2 torsion points minus m2 to the n, m1 torsion points plus uh, etc. So I will write it like this. It, it, it splits at this. Uh, I, I don't have to, yeah. Uh, please, sorry, I forgot the m. Uh, you split the m1, m2 torsion points in, uh, in, uh, in m2 torsion point pulled back by m1 uh, and, uh, and this. But of course, this is completely symmetric, so you can do this also. <coughs> so in conclusion, once you have that, if you take x a torsion section, such that if you multiply x by m, you, uh, you, you, stay, uh, you, you are equal to x, <coughs> then the pullback of that m divided, because if you put all the, here you have pullback of m1 star of that, of that m2 minus m1 to the n of that m2. So here you want to divide by by this number, and this equality, when you multiply by, uh, by uh, when you pull back by x, tell you that this is well defined. It's independent. So this is an element. Of m independent. Of small m. So this way, this is what. We call the we call the Eisenstein class. Okay, so once you have a torsion section, you can pull back in a canonical way this uh, this section. So in a, in, if you want to think homology, if you have a, a, a homology n minus one class in M, you can map it into a n minus one cycle n minus one cycle in the total bundle A in such a way that it avoids the M torsion points. And you can link it with the homology class. This you get a number, and this is exactly the uh, homology uh, of this homology class. And what is important for us is that it is rational and even almost um, an integer. You can, uh, using Bernoulli number, you can uh, pin down the, the defect of uh, being an integer. Okay. So that's for the that's for the topology. And now let's look at the relation between this and theta series. In some sense, we, see it's like a, we will see that it's like a very baby case of the previous, uh, uh, of the previous talk. And uh, so we'll see a relation with uh, <coughs> with uh, theta series. And the first thing to say is that Sullivan's theorem that were proved uh, uh, in half a page was uh, soon after reproved in uh, much more pages by uh, Bismuth uh, and Schiger. But uh, of course, uh, the challenge was not to add many pages, but to add something to, uh, uh, to the theorem. And they, they, ga they gave a, an analytical proof of Sullivan theorem by constructing an explicit transgression of the Tom form. So construction of explicit differential form, so a primitive, uh, let's say I should say primitive rather than transgression maybe, primitive um, uh, in uh, the RAM cohomology. And to do that, 
So they work over R. They, are, they take a, a, a representative of the of the dual of the of the Tom form, so of the dual class to the zero section, and they construct a primitive uh, of the uh, of this class. <coughs> and to do that, they use uh, the so-called Mata-Equivalent formalism. So use. Matayquilen formalism and Matayquilen, what does what does what, what does he do? What do they do for us? They construct a universal Tom form. So what is it? So universal. So it's a differential form of degree n on the v is a n-dimensional oriented uh, and uh, a vector space with a metric. Okay, S O N is uh, the, uh, the isometric group of this uh, of this metric, and they construct a form, uh, an n-dimensional form which is dual to zero. And which is equivalent, uh, which is uh, equivalent with respect to the uh, to the SON action. So this is a SON equivariant form. So you you don't have to know what it what is equivariant uh, differential form. We will soon uh, uh, transform this into uh, into something more uh, more uh, uh, more usual for us, I think. And uh, and they do more. They transgress that then for this form and construct. Uh, transgression of this away from zero, okay, a primitive of this form away uh, away from zero. So, <coughs> uh, so what are the advantages of uh, of this? Is that um, it is uh, completely canonical, the, the, both this construction and the transgression canonical when. You have fixed an orientation and a metric on your uh, on your vector uh, on your vector space, and uh, it's functorial. This will be very uh, useful for us. And also, it's uh, you see in this group G here is group theoretical. So we we are in good shape to uh, to form a, a theta series of the uh, second type uh, uh, mentioned in previous talk. Uh, and so we will apply this to. An object of particular interest, the moduli, the universal uh, uh, tor torus, uh, and first uh, the universal space of. Um, so I want to go toward universal space of tori, but first I will look at. Uh, the not so qu not really symmetric space, but almost uh, GLN R over S O N, which is uh, the space uh, precisely of uh, uh, metric plus orientation on our space V. Okay, Q uh, scalar product. Um, o orientation. On v. So we have <coughs> we have this uh, this space, and we have the standard action on GLN, and uh, we ca I will denote by E the bundle this bundle here, but with this uh, G GL uh, GLN uh, action. So this is a, a GLN R equivalent bundle, which ca which we can also identify with the the the, the bundle. Uh, So take the picture you prefer. This bu this bundle associated to the principal bundle GLNR over S. Okay, and once you have such a bundle, then you can pull back by Chern by, Chern by Chern Chernvel uh, theory. You can pull back the universal form uh, in uh, invariant form on this bundle. So that's the way we will think of the <coughs> uh, the Matayquilen form. The Matayquilen form gives you. Uh, so you, you use a Chernvel theory and a pullback 
of u gives you a form which I will denote phi, <coughs> which is a degree n form on the total space of the vector bundle E, which is GLN R equivariant. And I will rather think of this, as usual, as a as a uh, as a um, as an ele as an element uh, as a JK element uh, in the JK code chain. So it's not exactly JK code chain because it's the wedge product of P. P is as usual uh, uh, the orthogonal to the, al the Lie algebra of S1 inside the Lie algebra of GLN. But uh, now I work on the total space uh, E. So I add also the tangent space to the vector bundle, which is V. And uh, <coughs> here, I, uh, since I am GLN R equivalent, I, I, leave, I, I can uh, end into C infinity of V. But it's even more than that. The, the Mata-equivalent formalism uh, produces, the Mata-equivalent form produces for you uh, an element which lives not only in C infinity of V, but in the Schwartz space of, uh, of V. And this uh, uh, relief, we know what to do with the uh, uh, with, uh, with Schwartz, uh, with Schwartz function. OK, we, uh, with Schwartz function, we can build it a series. So to make link with the previous talk, this should be thought as a Kudla-Milson type form, but in a much simpler uh, situation, uh, in, a, in, a invari more invari uh, in a completely invariant uh, uh, situation. And by the way, uh, I should mention uh, a nice paper of uh, a recent paper of Luis Garcia, who recover uh, kudla milson form using the method of uh, of uh, Mata equivalent. I think it gives more uh, geometric, uh, an interesting geometric flavor, and uh, and it also enables to deal with uh, uh, period domains that are not uh, locally uh, locally symmetric. So it's a it's a very interesting uh, uh, thing. <coughs> and uh, so maybe it's hard, it's nice to have. Uh, I guess some formula. So let's take the simple ca interesting case. Uh, I, I mean, n equal one is also interesting, but <laughs> let's consider n equal two anyway. Uh, then the <coughs> and and use the usual coordinate for the for the bundle, which is h cross c. So the tau z coordinate with the usual al action of uh, SL two c on this uh, on this coordinate, <coughs> and then the form. The form phi, and I, I want to give at least this formula. It's a so the quadratic form over t in the z variable is precisely this uh, uh, modulus of z squared divided by y, and uh, and then you have Uh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I knew it was not so, so good idea to do that, but okay. Um, <laughs> so here is the, the form. So what you see here is exactly the uh, area form in the vertical direction, which corresponds really to the Tom form above one point, and you have to modify this to have a closed form. So it's a, you can check it if you're bored. If you're bored, I hope. I'm good. Uh, uh, so this is a closed. Uh, this is a closed form, and here you see on the on the horizontal direction the curvature form, which gives the area, area form. With, and if you pull back by uh, the zero section, you see exactly. You will see exactly the uh, the Euler class. Where did the Gaussian come from? Huh? Yeah, that, uh, I mean, what do you mean by there is a lot of to possible term form? So you're choosing it. Yeah, they, w they, cho they choose to work uh, okay. with a ga Gaussian, uh, Gaussian form. That's, that, that allows to have some. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, that, but that's part of uh, Mata uh, uh construction. <coughs> but of course, there, there are many other ways to, to build a uh, uh, term form. But I, I, if I have written the formula, is that I want to keep all the terms. I want to work really on h cross c and not go uh, over h uh, uh, immediately, at least. Um, <coughs> so as I said, this is 
so very close to Kudla Milson, and there is another step which is uh, uh, important for, uh, uh, especially if you uh, are interested in uh, in an arithmetic Chow group, uh, is the trans is uh, a transgression of uh, of phi, and here you have exactly the same thing. Uh, there is a um, there is a transgression. Of phi that in fact comes from uh, another uh, form with values in the Schwarz space, uh, which is a degree a, a degree n minus one form, still in the Schwarz space. <coughs> okay, so it's a degree n minus one GLNR invariant form, and it, it satisfies something which I will write like this to fit with the. Uh, usual notation in the Kudla Milson theory. Omega is the veil representation, which in our case it's very simple, it's just the uh, action inside the function by the by GLN. Okay. L is the infinitesimal uh, uh, generator of the center of the central GL1. And so if you act by the by the, by by L on phi, you can write explicitly as a uh, a primitive of uh, of this, and this is the this is really the form we will be interested in. If you remember what I what we have done in the beginning, in the beginning we have said that there was a primitive of the uh, of the term of the Euler class, and to pick, pin down a canonical choice, I said that Falting was using multiplication by some integer. Here is the multiplication by the integer in the fiber. The center GL1 acts by multiplication by t. So this pin, this pin down a canonical choice of, uh, of, uh, of primitive. OK, I will uh, spare you with the formula uh, <coughs> for psi. It's, it is uh, really what will be of interest for us, because it's the degree 1, n minus 1 form. Uh, and, uh <coughs> and just one. Uh, one remark, which is important. Uh, a more standard way to rewrite this in the in the world of uh, Chigger, uh, uh, Bismuth Chigger and uh, and Matai Quillen is that d over dt of phi t of phi t v e is equal to one over t d c so it's really the same, uh, the, sa the same formula, the multiplication by t in the fiber. And now if you integrate this from in t from 0 to infinity, you take integration, you end up, so I should, make, uh, should be careful a little bit, but <coughs> so you pull back by multiplication by t uh, at this side, that's what we do here. And here we have dt divided by t. The differential of this is precisely the, the difference between the two extremities. So psi, phi of infinity minus phi of 0. But phi of infinity, if you, are, uh, if you take a vector, so phi at so t, t is infinity, and you have a vector inside this. If you are a vector outside the 0 section, then it will, it will, uh, it will concentrate, it will kill it. Uh, so this is just. Uh, the current supported by the uh, by the zero section, uh, I don't know. Uh, this and uh, this we already said that it represents the term form. So the the transgression of the term class outside zero is exactly this. Okay. But uh, I uh, since I, I like to have short space, I prefer to work <laughs> with, uh, with a psi, of course. <coughs> OK. So now we have a psi. We have a Schwartz function, so we can build theta series. <coughs> and uh, uh, to build theta series, we take a lattice uh, L in V, okay, that is, <coughs> says the N, uh, and we apply the theta operator to the, Schwar to the Schwartz function in V. In fact, I will take, as, uh, as is quite usual, uh, I will apply uh, <coughs> a 
I will take uh, this summation and maybe uh, take away the zero vector if uh, if uh, if uh, this if uh, the point that we are here is in the is in the lattice. So it's important, but let's for, le let's forget about that uh, uh, for today. Uh <coughs> okay, and now if gamma is a subgroup of GLN R that preserves the lattice L, <coughs> then <coughs> if you apply theta L to the form psi here, you end up with the differential form of degree n minus 1 of a <coughs> of the total space uh, e, uh, uh, e co quotiented by lambda. Now you have average, you have uh, taking the average by lambda, and it is a gamma invariant form. Okay, and <coughs> so this is a, this is a theta series uh, I want to consider. And once I have this theta series, I can form the Mélin transform and get and get a Eisenstein series. But I keep track of the I want to to stay on the total space, on the total. Uh, this is the universal uh, torus. <laughs> <coughs> so Mélin transform gives you the theta series that I will denote like this. Theta L of so. I forgot this. OK, the, the NS is the right normalization to have so the good pole. Uh, so of course, if you put S equals 0, you see, you recognize uh, you have taken an average. And so it's a way to regularize, <coughs> as usual, it's a way to regularize uh, uh, the, the, mini, the integral from 0 to infinity of the, of, um, uh, the OK, uh, of this. and so. You, will, you won't be surprised that uh, it's related to the transgression of the term form in the quotient. Uh, so to come back to our example, what does it give if we take n equal 2? <coughs> n equal 2, this, uh, <coughs> so we are on the universal elliptic curve. So we have this uh, Eisenstein series, but there is this parameter v. Don't, for, don't forget about it. And uh, we can do two things. At least, maybe others, but we can do at least two things. First, we can restrict to a fiber over tau, over a point. So if we take a restriction to a fiber, uh, restriction to fibers, <coughs> then uh, we see above uh, the, <coughs> the, uh, the modular surface, uh, we see uh, 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 differential form in the in the in the fi in the fibers that are of the type uh, uh, oh, I erase the, of the type dz over z, and uh, and so pulling it back uh, by a torsion section, a section to fiber plus plus torsion section, we end up with the so-called Eisenstein Lerch uh, uh, Kronecker. Kronecker should be before, certainly, uh, Eisenstein series <laughs> of uh, weight 1. So these are uh, denoted like that in Wade's book on the classical uh, work of Kronecker and Eisenstein. And now if we pull back by a section and, and look at the restriction on the base, so restriction on the base by, base by torsion section, then we end up I mean, no, if I, if I have K, K1, there is no torsion section. And here there is K2. And when we pull da, pull, plug in torsion points, then we end up with a weight 1 Eisenstein series. And he, here we end up with a weight 2 Eisenstein series. So th in this bits, there are both weight 1 Eisenstein series. In fact, there are, <coughs> if you add up coefficients, you, are, you s can see all the weight, um, uh, every weight occur occurring. OK. <coughs> mm. So now, in general, we have this, uh, this form. 
and we will we want to we evaluate them uh, at uh, at zero. So uh, there is no pole at s equals zero, and I will denote by upside of GV the evaluation at zero. And important fact for us is that <coughs> what we are here that it was a primitive of phi zero uh, is, uh, it, uh, gives after regularization that it is zero on away from the zero section. So this form is closed away from the zero section. And now we can proceed as in, uh, as in faulting. We take a linear combination uh, of this form, which corresponds to take a dual class to a degree zero uh, divisor. So we take a linear combination <coughs> as, in, uh, as in Sullivan, sorry, as and Sullivan. And this, this gives, uh, uh <coughs> I will, uh, um, this gives uh, Eisenstein, uh, a, uh, Eisenstein uh, a close form. <coughs> A closed form, uh, and maybe once you, if you consider, for example, this second case, and you pull back by a torsion section, then what you get here is uh, is um, the weight two Eisenstein series associated to a torsion point. So in n equal two, by restricting to a torsion section associated to a uh, to uh, a rational uh, vector alpha beta, you end up with <coughs> the Eisenstein series associated to a torsion point that are traditionally denoted like this. And if you now want to understand the cohomology class it represents, you, you integrate along cycle this Eisenstein series. And this gives you the classical <coughs> Radmacher, Radmacher uh, dedicating uh, uh, homomorphism. Okay? So, you can think of these classes as generalization in, uh, in degree n of this. But when you do that, you only consider that part of the picture, not, uh, not the other. And I want to, uh, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not enough. So uh, is this recovering Gs's computation in no? No. And the around the trap well. No, it, it recovers. Uh, so that's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's rec what, what you compute here, I mean, yeah, but it, it's not it's not the same linking numbers that you are computing here. So the linking number you are computing, if you take an SL2Z matrix corresponding to gamma here, and uh, you consider R2 over Z2, yeah. and uh, take the mapping the mapping torus uh, so cross zero one. This gives a three-dimensional manifold with boundary, and you glue uh, by. Yeah, it's not SL2. It's not. It's not. It's not SL2. Uh, so, but uh, but inside this, if you erase the zero section, then you have li you can link the periodic orbits of A, and that's what you are computing here. It's kind of interesting that the answer is given by the same feet. Yeah, on on the other hand, there are not in there are not so many. There are not so many in that. In that I don't. Th that's a good question because I don't see the. I I, I don't. See how to put uh, the GIS picture in in that in that setting, but um, that's uh, that's life. Uh, I, I think it's quite different. In, in fact, <coughs> okay. Uh, so uh, yeah, I should say that this this cycle. So if you only consider the restriction to the base by a torsion section and take uh, the corresponding cohomology class. Then it gives a, 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 cl a class that were already considered and called the Eisenstein class by Nori in, uh, in an ICM paper in, in the late uh, 90s. Uh, and it should be equivalent to, a co uh, to the Sketch co cycle for GLNZ, but uh, uh, the construction of Sketch is uh, quite, it's quite far from that, so it's not uh, so easy to check. <coughs> OK, so now. I want, like, I want to, to to give reason to consider this. <coughs> it, 
it's mainly uh, a project. So, uh, so I, I told you in the beginning, there is no real new theorem. Uh, th there is a, an old theorem that one can recover and that actually doesn't care at all, but I will uh, mention uh, uh, any, anyway. Uh, <coughs> is that you have this co-cycle, which con was considered by, uh, uh, by Nori, uh, uh, and certainly the same as Sech also. Uh, so it's a co-cycle for, uh, for a congruent subgroup of, uh, of, G of GLN, of GLNZ. And uh, now if you have a, a degree N, extension totally real degree and extension and then associated to that you have of course a tori in the symmetric space associated to gln so uh, n minus one cycle in uh, s uh, <coughs> in this uh, in this locally symmetric space and now you have a you have a cohomology class of the same degree. Uh, what you do, of course, is to uh, compute what it means, what it is. And uh, it is very, very easy to compute because of the functoriality of these classes. Above this cycle, the bundle Rn canonically split as a direct sum of line bundle. And that's why it's interesting to compute the Matthijs-Quillen term form and the transgression for n equal 1, because you compute it explicitly. You take a simple integration, and you end up with uh, uh, an L value, uh, of course, associ uh, uh, associated to the, uh, the, um, the, co um, the character associated to this uh, extension and twisted by the, the sign you, you need. And so from a uh, very simple computation, you recover that uh, klingen single and you even recover uh, the link ribet because you can control the integrality of, um, uh, of this. So. Sorry, actually, I had to, to mention this. Uh, but uh, but uh, the reason I, 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 ma I mentioned this is that now you can, you, uh, you, uh, the way you, sh you should think of it is that uh, <coughs> it was some kind of CISO in Kudlat's uh, terminology. <coughs> what, you are, what you are, in fact, doing is, uh, is that you are working with the dual pair GL1. GLN here, and you are lifting a character, and so the toric periods correspond some s in, some sen in some sense as this. Um, so it's, a, it's, a, it's not interesting here to consider, uh, to consider CISO, but it's, uh, it should bring you to what to do next. <coughs> so this is a toric period. It's uh, n minus 1 because the center, the center uh, doesn't count. And, uh, and uh, this is related to that. But once you see this picture, of course, you want to change the, uh, the pairs here and use the, uh, co the, the cycle psi to apply to uh, other pairs. And you still have integrality and so on. So you can expect, and this is only work in progress, but you can expect, for example, to extend this to non-totally real uh, field or more generally to uh, some uh, <coughs> Uh, uh, ranking Selberg L, uh, L values and to, to prove rationality of, uh, or of interesting Eisenstein series or uh, a special value of, uh, of L function. And to, to, end, uh, to end with something else, I want to mention uh, the first CISO I find very attractive to, to consider. <coughs> Is, uh, is the following. So it sits inside GL2 and R. You consider this CISO, which is inside the, the, big, the big group, the big ambient group is GL2N. OK? And <coughs> so the class we construct, Psi, is a class of degree. 2n minus 1. And now what you want to, to do with such a class, you want to make whatever it means, but you have formula. You can pursue, pr proceed to partial, partial integration along this uh, n minus 1 torus, which is associated to, uh, OK, along this n minus uh, uh, the, uh, this uh, n minus 1 torus. Uh, of course, behind this, uh, this uh, uh, 
uh, this CSO, you should think that R2N is decomposed as uh, C tensored R, uh, Rn. And here there is the action of the GL2. So here it's really the mo modular surface or uh, Hilbert modular, here, here Hilbert, Hilbert modular uh, varieties. And here these are real manifold, uh, locally symmetric space associated to, to GLN. So what you are doing here is that uh, you are taking partial integration along homology class here, which corresponds to modular symbol in, in GLN uh, uh, in GLNZ. And uh, you associate to them something which is, uh, uh, which is uh, I, I erase, but uh, we, which is a, a combination of, uh, uh, of uh, weight on each factor, weight one or weight two Eisenstein series. If you restrict to the fiber, you see weight one Eisenstein series on each factor. If you restrict to the diagonal, you end up with product of weight one Eisenstein series. And uh, <coughs> the CISO will tell you that uh, the product of this one, one uh, the Peterson product of this, of the, of the weight n Eisenstein series you see here with any cusp form is equal to uh, the lift of this cusp form using the theta correspondence restricted to this, uh, um, to this homology cycle. If this homology cycle is zero, you end up then with relation bet with, uh, between product of weight one uh, of weight one form that are very uh, that resemble uh, the Bo uh, Borisov uh, that were considered by uh, uh, Borisov Gunnels, for example, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in special cases. And uh, I want to conclude that uh, this uh, this fits well with the construct with a very explicit construction à la Sech by Pierre Charolois of a cycle of uh, uh, of GLN with values in uh, in uh, 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 weight n Eisenstein series <coughs> linear combination of which locally are li uh, which are lo uh, linear combination of product of weight one Eisenstein series so he has bu built a very nice uh, co-cycle that fits well with this uh, construction although we don't know exactly uh, uh, how to prove that it is the same but so this is this is only one example then you of course once you have this and CISO, you have many, uh, many things to, to try, and we are, we are trying to make the computations. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, may, maybe I should mention that uh, the one thing is missing, of course, in this picture, is that in the classical case, you see we, we have in the same object both weight one and weight two Eisenstein series. The true reason is that below this, there is uh, the same Jacobi form as uh, was in the in the in the previous talk, and uh, it, they, they arise when you take different di when you take differentiation with respect to z. You see weight one Eisenstein series, and when you di differentiate with respect to tau, tau you see uh, weight two Eisenstein series. So of course, there in this classical situation, there is a beast above which corresponds to the DD bar transgression. But in this situation, there is no more complex structure and no more DD bar transgression. But we are somewhat forced uh, it's there is a big pressure to consider to build some kind of uh, the link homology or uh, moti why not motivic homology equivalent motivic homology in that setting and <coughs> that would be uh, that would be the next goal but now i think it's time to uh, to stop so <laughs> <laughs>